Hello, good afternoon, good evening, or good morning. Depends on where the world you're watching us. This is Newbie Nights with Riveting TV. I'm Dojan. And I'm Half-Life 15. And we have sound. Sound. We have sound. Yeah. In part one, <laughs> we are going to be showing you and talking to you all about the little things. The little things being absolutely anything you want. This is some of the things that can help you win games more easily. That's basically what we're going to be doing today. Things like how to talk to your teammates to get them to do things that you think might help you win. How to read who on your team seems to be doing well or just little decision making you can make during the game to help raise your win percentage. Simple yes. as that, yeah? Yes. Cool. Ah, right. How is everybody tonight? We've, we've been trying to tell you how we are. How are yeah. you? How are how you? How are you amazingly gorgeous people out there? How are you? Because we, we, we feel exhausted that for the last 30 minutes we've had no <sighs> sounds. Uh, horror. Good. They're, they're drunk. That's horror. awesome. That's good. That's very good. Then this was all just a part of the show. Ooh. <laughs> oh, did I tell you on Thursday they're going to bring a chieftain tank as well to be able to drive over cars? Cool. Yeah, you can drive a chieftain tank over cars and a centurion. You, you, you can do it? I, I would be able to. Right. My boss won't give me the time off. Ah, oh, sucks to be you. Or it sucks to be your boss. It does. I've talked about my donut and my epic hat, but you missed it. So watch the show live and you won't miss my epic hat. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, right. let's Should we talk actually about... go with the show then? Hi, yeah, let's talk, let's talk about the little things. Um, little things that people won't just know from just playing the game by themselves. Even with friends, you can even miss out on things like, uh, you know... Uh, if you just should just charge onto the battlefield, or if that's the best thing, um, you don't really know how to read the minimap properly uh, because you um, don't know which icons means what, and you don't really know to, how to ping the minimap, or that you can show the enemy which tanks you're uh, you want help with killing, or which tanks you want to show that you're killing, and you don't really know your specific role on the field. So we're going to cover those just one by one. And let's start off with the minimap. The minimap has um, each tank has its own um, icon. Uh, for instance, um, let's go into the garage for you because I can show that off with the small uh, minimap thingy I have. So, yep, you're small now. And uh, let's go into any map. And uh, we will create a light tank. And the light tank, even though it's very small, you can see that it yeah, it's really small, but it's just one dot. Um, and that is the light tank. The medium tanks are split into two. And uh, two small, oh, well, the same thing as the light tank is, don't do that, <laughs> it is just split over in the middle and shows you that it is two um, blocks of icons put together and that's the medium tank. And uh, the heavy tank is a lot bigger, of course, it is much bigger than any of the medium tanks uh, and is divided into three. And that is the heavy tank. Then we have the tank destroyers. The tank destroyers is, um, I think they're made as a triangle because they are good at penetrating almost anything at their own tier. That's my explanation. I don't know what yours is. Makes sense, doesn't it? Triangle, penetrating. Yeah, yeah penetrating. Mm. And Why not? Uh, yep. <laughs> and artillery is just, is just a square. A square in the in a sense, when yeah, you know a square, it's just not tilted or anything. A square. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah. So basically, guys, it's um, your mini map is very important. From a quick glance, you can instantly see where your teammates are. You can see that you're on your own. You can see if your enemies are coming. You can see everything from the mini map. If you've got a good enough radio and a radio man that's alive, you can generally speaking know exactly what's going on on the map. So if you've dri driven ahead 
and you're so far ahead you can't see your teammates, but you can see on the listings on either side of the screen that no one's dead yet, you know you're a bit too far from your teammates. A solo tank is a dead tank. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just knowing the, um, the icons, especially when you're going up against the enemy, um, if someone ahead of you scouts the enemy and you don't have any mods installed, you will only be able to see um, the hit points and the icon of the tank. If you haven't gone, gone into the settings and filled around with the with the markers, then the tank class won't show up. So knowing the icons is very good. So you know what you're charging into. That's actually um, a point I would like to bring up. Yep. Learn how to customize your interface. Whether you use mods or not, there's actually a really good basic interface you can go into. If you click on yep. settings, go over to customize or, or visual, whatever Marker. it's called. Marker. You can change everything from when you press Alt, which is an alternative view um, on your keyboard. This is something I do a lot. Because I don't use um, a mods tool, I actually have dead tanks disappear um, from my normal view. But if I press Alt, I have all the dead tanks with what they were come up. I actually have on by default the player names, and then I have the tank names when I press Alt because I know most of the symbols. So learning what fits you and customizing your interface to help you as a person is really important. Being comfortable with your controls, understanding where things are without having to look down and being able to do things quickly without having to think about them much is very important. Uh, most pro players struggle when they go to a, um, a tournament if they haven't brought their own setup because things are slightly different. And that slows them down even if just a second, it slows them down enough for them to make a mistake. And that can be the difference between winning £700,000 and £10,000. Yep. And uh, we also we heard that from Laughter when he was trying to play his artillery and he couldn't have the mod where you could zoom out even more, so he knew exactly where the enemy tanks were, and then he had a little bit of trouble with uh, with getting used to that. And if you have to get used to something in the moment, then you're not going to perform very well. Yeah. One other thing to know about the minimap is make it bigger. I actually have it on about I don't know a tenth of my screen, my minimap. I sometimes even drive by my minimap. And that allows me, it's a habit I've picked up from other games where you, you basically play the game from the minimap and you only look up when you have to do precision stuff. And I actually play the game mostly like that because it allows you to see um, where things are going. If you're on your own, your teammates haven't backed you up. One of my biggest uh, flaws, I would say I still do, especially when I'm tired, I've come home from work, I'm a bit tired, I just want to play, I don't care where my teammates are. And that's the times where I, I, don't, lo I don't win as much, I, I you know, lose just as many as I win, and my efficiency isn't particularly high in the sense of I'm you know, not earning many credits and maybe not as much experience as I would like. And that's because I'm playing sloppy, but it's okay. You don't have to always play your best. But when you are in the mood to learn, really focus on what's made you different. Don't rush and play the game, quit the game, and join the next one to your next tank. Sit there and watch. Think, why did I just die then? Was it really a lucky shot? Was it really my bad teammates? Or was I in the wrong place? Analyzing your own play style and your, what your teammates did and what you did with your teammates can really help you improve. Yep, and um, that's what the replays are for. If you really want to see, if you, didn't, if you don't know at all how you died, then there's the replay system, um, which is very handy if you want to learn or if you want to show off. Uh, but I use it, um, or I've I, I played the game long enough that when the, uh, the the replay system finally came in, uh, I didn't really learn a lot from just watching the replays again. I usually knew what I died to, um, but in the, the replay system you can go in and you can uh, slow it down to one sixteenth of a second if you need Something that, like, yeah. if you really need that, and you can see exactly where the shell is coming from that killed you. So um, if you had no idea and want to know which part of your tank was open um, while you tried to, to fight against the other tanks, then the replay system is very good for that. Hi, Fly. Could you show them how to enable the battle when you play? Yeah. And then I'll tell them how it works. Basically, um, all you do is enable battle replays by ticking the tick box, and then you go to your World of Tanks folder wherever you installed it. The quickest way to get there is right-click your World of Tanks shortcut, press Properties, or if you're Windows 7, uh, Open Target Directory, in there, go to replays, 
and it's right there. You just double click on them. As long as you haven't got border tags open, border tags has to be closed, and you'll go in and watch the battle. You can rewind, fast forward, slow down, speed up. You can do uh, many different things. It's really good. You can only watch it from your point of view. You can watch it from either exactly what you're watching and looking at or free cam behind your tank. Now, these both have really good uh, advantages over each other. One, if you fix view, you can see exactly what your decision making was. You can watch the mini map and say, damn, how did I not notice that heads are getting onto my side and blowing up with HE? It's because I was focusing on that guy in the distance. Maybe I should remember when I'm focusing on every time I shoot to zoom out and have a quick look around because I've got to wait for my reload to happen anyway. So I've got enough time to zoom out and have a look around. Oh, one thing uh, a lot of people I've taught, I didn't realize or even think to mention. If you hold down the right button, you actually don't turn your turret if you look around. A lot of people don't know that. You hold down your right mouse button and move the mouse, your, your vision will look around without your turret moving. So you can stay on target and look around. You don't lose any of your aim. Then you press shift and you go straight back into sniping mode to take your next shot. It allows you to be able to look around between shots without losing your aim. Yep. That's something that um, a lot of people ask about. Um... <laughs> And um, yeah, it's it's very um, it's basic knowledge, but then again, uh, wargaming doesn't really um, teach you how to do it. So why should it be basic when you're not taught how to do it? You're not. I don't know if you are taught to to ping the minimap either. No. Are you that? No. Okay. If well, you ha yeah, hold, tell them yeah, how to do it. Like. Yeah, hold down control. And you'll get, um, you'll see that when we get into a match in part two. But you get um, the arrow, which is in the um, over the minimap right now, and you can go down and click any of the squares on the minimap. And the Bing. both in the uh, chat and on the minimap will light up. I don't know how many times you can have a mod where it's 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 just once, but I think it's three times or twice, and bleep, bleep, uh, just to show. Um, Tell your enemy, or not the enemy, tell your ally where the enemies are or where the most uh, threatening tanks are or which uh, direction you need to go, where you need support, where you need to push, anything really. Um, if you have a plan that, that worked in the past, then you should, um, even though, even if it's pinging on the middle of, the, of, of, of mines, uh, most people just assume that people go there, but if nobody is going there then yeah then yeah you're gonna lose the hill so pinging the minimap and just telling the enemy or the allies again <laughs> where you're going it really helps because then your teammates knows know that you're going there and they don't have to worry about the hill being lost um just a note of warning don't be so splam a lot no nope. don't be that guy who pings so much that you get added to people's ignore list Remember, one ping, people will pay attention to. 50 pings, people just go, fucking shut up. It's like with car alarms. When you hear them going off outside, when it first goes off the first time, you have a look outside. Huh, what's that noise? Why is that car alarm going off? If it goes off every day, you start not paying attention to it. You start going, well, it's that car that always, alarm always goes off. Why should I look at it this time? And that's the time that someone robs it and you know gets away with all the goods in front of 20 people who are not looking because that alarm always goes off. So don't be that guy who spams a minimap, but at the same time, use it when you need to. I'm going down low, right at the start. Just type, going low, going top, heading over to C12. Just say that. Even if someone takes a piss out of you for saying it, ignore them. They're the shit player. Say yep. what you're doing, ignore them, and just do what you're doing. Half your team who didn't say anything have read your message and going, okay, he's going over there. I'll probably join him. And then at least you have someone with you that's there. Even if, and I've said this a lot in the company battles, a bad plan followed by everyone or a bad plan followed well is a better plan than a good plan followed poorly. So if you have five people doing five different plans, you're going to lose. If you have five people doing one plan that isn't necessarily the best plan, you have a higher chance of success than the five people doing five individual plans. Yep. And um, yeah, just write whatever you're going to do or if you need something, if you need support, then ping the minimap and write, I could need some support over here or RT, look here because I'm going to scout here right now. So yeah. um, the minimap is insanely important to have uh, a successful team match. And um, the same thing 
with they've just moved the button, but F2 for now, but you can rebind it back to T, which it was before for target. And um, you can, when you're aiming at an enemy, even if you're not going to take a shot, if you just need help, you've just fired your shell and you really need some help with the tank that's pushing against you, aim for it. Uh, whenever you see the silhouette of it, you can press T, or if you haven't rebinded, F2, and then the game will tell uh, in the chat that you need, uh, is it requesting fire at? I think yeah, it is. Yeah, now it's, it's something really weird now, but yeah, it's fine. Yeah, but... Um, that that tells the enemy or the, again the enemy the allies where you are aiming and where you need help. Dude, just um, say my teammates. Yeah, my <laughs> teammates, teammates. My teammates uh, tells my teammates where I I need some help. Now that it's changed for artillery, it's still attacking. So if you're in artillery, always press T when there's teammates around the target because then they know that you're going to fire down on them and they know not to go and face hug them. And if they go and face hug them then it's their own fault, because it's in the chat. I'm attacking this tank. I'll go next to it. Oh, you died by the splash. I told you. Even though yeah. uh, some people don't think you you really need to, to, to force the, the, the order into their hit, even though they don't read the chat sometimes. Yeah, one note I actually wanted to bring up uh, on this basis was a few of the quick keys you can learn. Now, if you hold down Z, you get a radial uh, menu now, and you can you move your mouse over to what you want to say. But a quick one is affirmative. F5. It's really easy to press because it's the one furthest to the left on the second block of F keys. So it's really easy to find it without looking down. In fact, my keyboard is so far under my desk, I can't actually see the buttons. So when I have to type something like a password that I don't remember, I have to bring my, my keyboard all the way out. So things like this is really helpful. So pressing F5 will say affirmative. Now, if someone says, I need help, or can someone help me over here? Just whack in affirmative if you are going to do that. It's so much easier than going enter yes and trying to misspell yes as quickly as possible. Because it's just F5 back to the controls. And it lets them know it gives a blink and it, it says it over your head and everything so they know you're doing it. It's a really quick one to do. Again, just press it once. Use it when you need to. Don't abuse it. But um, it's little keys like that will help you immensely save you time and make uh, your teammates be able to work better with you. Now, this is a question from the audience, Highflyer. Yes. Or not question as such, a comment. a comment. Zelfish said, most times I die because I trust my team too much. Now, ex do, you, do you want to explain that statement and how it's a bit flawed? Or do you well, want me to? Yeah. Um... Well, you could. We could both. If you miss some points, I will okay. come at you. Okay, come at me, boy. Bro. Basically, trusting your team too much is another way to say that you overplayed. Okay? Um, yes, I wish you could trust your teammates in the sense of, I'm going to drive around this corner, take a shell. If my teammates come around the corner at the same time as I drive out, they will destroy these tanks. What happens? You drive out, you get shot, you die, your teammates sit there, and you're like, for God, why didn't you come with me? Right? Am I right? Is this a situation you get into? Now, the best thing to do at this point is try to talk to your teammates. Explain the plan as quickly as possible. Usually when you're in these situations, you're in a stalemate anyway, and your teammates are bored looking at that one corner, too scared to move forward. If you say, hey, guys, I'll go forward, take the next hit. You guys go around and get the experience, get the kills. You'll be surprised how many people go, yeah, I'm going to do that. So stopping thinking, communicating your plan and not just assuming they're as good as you. If you are better than your teammates, you've got to explain to them what to do. You've got to give them that knowledge and empower them. That's how you get your team to perform at your level, not you perform at their level. If you just sit there and be quiet, you're not going to make them any better than you. And if you're, if you're just sat there complaining at them all the time, they're not going to listen to you. You've got to be nice, but confident, not cocky and... Just say, okay, guys, do this. And if they say no, then you just go, okay, then we'll just sit here and, and camp. It's better than just going forward and dying. Yep, it is. Um, exactly. Yep, and the um, got a perfect situation on the map El Haluf each and every single time. People will push north and sit there uh, in RT cover, which isn't really artillery cover because they can splash you, and the enemy just needs to hold, need to hold you there. Uh, if you type 
guys, let's push down at 12 uh, if you're up there that fast. Uh, I've done that several times with bastard with uh, with a, with uh, with my um, see my Löwe. I've done that with my Löwe, and I've done that with my Super Pershing. I've done that with my ELC. I've done that with plenty of tanks. Just just written uh, at 12. I'm gonna push down. Please join. And if people type uh, negative or no, that stupid dude, then then I won't do it. But if I see a lot of affirmative then I'm going for it, and then we're all going down for it, and then they get killed. If I'm just in a platoon, then we obviously know that we're going to do it. So when the uh, when the uh, teammates see that three of you are pushing, uh, when we've written, this platoon is going to push in just a second. They're going to follow, because they know what you're going to do. So, um, yeah, tell your teammate what to do, or teammates, what you will do, and hopefully they should respond before you do it. And if they yeah. don't respond, then don't count on them. Totally. Now, this is actually one point that you, people are saying in the chat as well. Remember that half your teammates are just as lost as you are sometimes. You're frustrated with their inability to act. Generally speaking, they're not deliberately being bad. They don't know what to do. And it may be obvious to you, but they might be panicked. They might be distracted. They might have children in the background. They might be their parents shouting at them. They might just be that bad at the game or new to the game and inexperienced and they don't know what to do. They're waiting on someone to say, hey, dude, do this. And that person making the decision for them makes them feel better because they're like, well, if we lose, it's his fault. So if you want to be that guy who's good enough to say and doesn't care if they fail or not, say, okay, we could try this, guys. You'll also be surprised how many people your teammates will go, yeah, let's try that. And just have a thick skin because if things go wrong, you will be the one to blame. But at least something happened and you'll get better at making decisions the more you try it. Yep. And um, there's all, 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 also the F7 key. Uh, which you shouldn't abuse either, um, help! which is the help key, or it sends out an SOS on the minimap now. Um, if you press help from the beginning of the match, um, they've just um, they've just inserted the, uh, the 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 round wheel of commands by pressing set. So you can press if you highlight a tank, uh, your allied tanks. Um, you can uh, aim at someone and press set and then aim away and then find the follow key and then click follow then it'll say high fly 15 follow me and by doing that you you ask for support instead of just clicking the minimap and pressing help because help is something different than would you please come and help or would you please support me because help is just help and <laughs> I always, I often see the the help coming out when people have said, "Let's go this way," and the peop no people goes. people don't follow him, and then he just rushes into the enemy, and then he spams help, and then he dies, and then the yeah. obvious noobs comes out. Fitzgerald actually pointed out this. Sorry, you are right, but a tier ten with seven K games played under his belt, who is pl always plays terribly, is where I draw the line. Now, this comes under several things. You can't help everybody. Some people are jackasses. Some people think they're really good. Some people who think they're amazing, but they're not. They, these are the people who, generally speaking, are doing okay as a person, but they're really, like, as a person with skill level, but are really bad as a team player. And so they lose a lot. They have low win percentage usually, but they have quite a high stats. Like, they have lots of damage and stuff like that, lots of defense points, because they're very selfish players. Now, they're the people who rage. And if you try and give them advice, often they'll go, shut up, noob. I know what I'm doing. You're a fag. You suck, beep. You know, that sort of stuff. You get a rage against you all the freaking time from these sort of players. You can't help them. Add them to your ignore list, ban them from your life, and be on your way. You yeah. can't win everybody. No. Other players are that stupid. And no matter how you explain it to them, they will just play poorly. Again, Adam to ignore list. Note that they're really bad and they won't listen. They won't ever get better. That's fine. Let them play their game. Don't rage at them. They won't learn. They won't care. All you're doing is upsetting a person in real life. Have a regards to their feelings. Yeah, you may be hurting your feelings because he's playing badly, but think about it this way. He's that bad. He already feels bad. You know? 
he just can't get better. So just ignore them. Hopefully you won't see them. If you ever see him as your top tier, try and calculate how you can use that to your advantage. He's in a mouse. He's going to drive forward and attract all the attention. Okay, I'll stay near him. So when he does that and he lights up the enemy, I'm going to get some free shots off. So basically, yeah. Yeah. Um, IG Pellin just uh, wrote that, please don't be a douche. He wrote something else about it. And push your teammates' tanks around. I've reported three, uh, two to three people now and even have a replay with someone pushing me into the line of fire. Yeah. That's not what the new physics are for. You're not supposed to use a h much higher horsepower tank to push your tanks or allies into the fire. I've seen this done plenty of time, even with me. I was sitting at a spotting position and someone else just came, pushed me out of the way and into the water. I died, of course, but he obviously wanted to sit in the bush more than me. <laughs> so, And the same thing with bigger tanks. Um, if you have one of the, the German tanks, the German tanks uh, usually have the biggest horsepower and can push IS-3s into the, into the open and, and smaller tanks like that. Um, just be aware of the fact that you're able to do this. Even when you just uh, graze a tank, you will turn their crosshair all the way around and they can't aim because the physics allow you to move other tanks now. So, yep. Be yeah, wary. that's actually what five is just actually brought up my next point. I was actually about to say the same thing. Try your best not to clip your allies. Now, there's a new form of griefing in World of Tanks that came with physics without not more than just pushing you into rivers and stuff. And that is if you just keep rocking into the enemy. If you keep ramming an ally constantly, the aim will constantly go up and down, up and down, and they won't be able to shoot. If they're in sniper's mode, they just cannot shoot. Their aim will be constantly moving because of you rocking their tank. Now, don't do that. If you get caught doing that, I would be a person who report you for that. And I don't want any of our viewers doing that. Be the bigger man and understand that they're doing it. Everyone lose their temp uh, temper occasionally, guys. We understand that, but try not to. Okay, we all we all have tempers. We all lose them occasionally. We all do that nerd rage. Oh, fucking hell, I can't believe that just happened. We all do it. Me more than most. Yeah, I don't rage at other people. I rage all the time to myself. I can't believe I just fucking did that. Oh my God, I'm such a crap player. I rage at myself all the time, but rarely do I rage at other people. The only people I rage at are the people raging at other people. I don't like it. I can't stand it. I feel that the internet is the sort of place that people feel that they can just bully people as much as they like. They don't think that beyond that computer screen is a real person. There are real people like me, like Highflyer, like yourself. The other person is real. And if he's reading what you're saying, you're trying to ask him to die because he's playing bad at a video game, look at yourself and realize what the fuck you're doing. All right? <laughs> Seriously, guys. It's just one of these things that if you guys spread and you stand up for these sort of things, it will happen less and less. It will make playing games a lot nicer on online communities. You look at things like League of Legends and Dota where people have no patience whatsoever. If all these people were actually given helping hands and saying, hey, you meant to do this to last hit. By the way, if you do that, you'll die a lot less. Instead of, oh my God, stop feeding, you noob. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Plus one for the Dota reference. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, the uh, last time that I've um, played alone. I shouldn't really play alone, but when I do, and one flank falls and I die alone over there, instead of going, God damn it, I could have used support over here, I go, left side is falling, could need some support. Um, of course, not. It could be directed towards someone, but the sentence isn't angry, it's advice. So channel your rage into. Advice, calm advice, <laughs> I would say, because it can easily turn into rage. And yeah, so few words turn an entire sentence into yeah, so rage. Our closing point of part one will be this. Think about the insult noob. Often I see people get shot or blown up early or even lose and shout in all chat, God, you bunch of noobs. Now, think about what he just did. He just said that his opponents are all noobs. He has just lost against said noobs. What does that make him? We'll see you in part two.